Yo, Bytor here. Hi everybody and welcome back to another video. Before we get started, I wanted to give a shout out to one of our followers who engaged us to help him prepare for his technical interview. This person requested to remain anonymous and so we'll call this person Jeff. Let me tell you a little bit about Jeff. Jeff will be graduating in December and has decided to be proactive about looking for jobs. I would like to applaud that and encourage you guys to be proactive when looking for jobs. You might think your graduation date is still far away, but the process of getting a job can be a long one. It can definitely take anywhere from 6 months to a year, so definitely plan accordingly. Anyway, Jeff is graduating as a hardware engineer and was looking for jobs in this field. Jeff got many interesting questions that we will be sharing with you throughout different videos. I would like to share with you today two of these questions. One of them Jeff thought was silly yet tricky when asked. Full disclosure here, Jeff actually said he did struggle with this question due to being nervous. I got to tell you, it is one thing to be answering questions you see on these videos from the comfort of your home than it is when sitting across a technical person during a job interview. Anyway, after Jeff was asked a few questions about ADCs, the interviewer told him the following. We have a few engineers working on this tough problem and I figure I would bring it up to you to see if you can help us solve it. We have this near perfect square wave and we are struggling to figure out how many bits we need on an ADC to accurately capture it. How many bits do you think we need to capture this square wave accurately enough? Now, I will not give you the answer to this question today, but notice the very peculiar way in which the question was asked. I loved it. You will only get this type of questions when actually interviewing or watching our videos. I would love to hear your answers either on the comments or through email at hardware.interviews at gmail.com. Don't forget to reach out to us for free help on preparing for your technical interviews. Anyway, let's jump on to that second question that comes straight from Jeff's interview. This being a hardware position that he was applying for, he required to be well versed on many different electrical components. If you are a recent college grad, this question might throw you off. Here's the question. The interviewer will say something along these lines. Imagine I have a bench power supply that is only capable of giving me an output of 10 volts. Also imagine that I have a board that I need to debug but this board can only take 5 volts as an input. What can I do to solve my problem? Let me pause for 10 seconds here and give you some time to think about your answer. Alright, first what you should be doing on your interviews is drawing the components and drawing out the problem so you have a little bit of extra time to think about it. So we have our power supply, that's this box right here, that can output 10 volts. And over here, we have the PCB that we need to debug. This PCB, as we said, can only take five volts as an input. Unfortunately, many recent college grads, and you might be tempted to do this as well, will answer the question with a simple resistor divider, like so. I mean, in theory, it does work, right? You are dividing your 10 volt output by 2 and outputting 5 volts that your PCB can safely consume, right? While this is true, it is a very inefficient way of doing it. The reason why recent college grads decide to opt for the resistor divider is because that's why they're used to do when trying to step down voltages. However, as a professional hardware engineer, you will need to quickly adapt and think of what other tools are at your disposal. In this situation, the far better option and the correct answer is to use a step-down regulator module. That's exactly what the interviewer was after. And that's the answer for today's question. However, the interviewer can easily follow up by asking you whether you would want to use a step-down buck converter or a linear regulator which was exactly what happened to Jeff. Which one do you think it should be? Anyway, that's all I have for you today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.